Have you ever been through multiple rounds of interviews with a company and at the end of it, when you have finally made it to the end, you just get utterly disappointed at the salary? In almost every company, there is a benchmarking system for salary. Several factors, namely your years of working experience, skill set, last round salary, interview performance, will contribute to the salary amount you will get offered. There will always be a salary range that HR can work with. Due to this flexibility, here are some things you can do to ensure you get the best offer possible. Number 1. The what is your expected salary question. The wrong thing that most people do is to give a range. For example, if John were to say that he's okay with anything between $4,000 to $4,500, the only number the employer really hears is $4,000. You will end up getting an offer that is actually not what you want. Instead, always give a single number. If they ask you on the spot whether your expected salary is negotiable, you can reply by saying that it really depends on the annual total compensation package that the company has. This means whether the company pays out any performance bonuses, allowances, or flexible benefits within each year. Number two, never accept an offer on the spot. Once HR has given you the amount they will be offering and all the benefits, never accept it right away. Ask whether they can give you some time to consider before informing them of your decision. If you were to accept the offer right away, this eliminates any possibility for you to negotiate. If you are desperate for a job, there is no need to fear that the company will withdraw the offer. They won't. There is nothing wrong with asking for some time to make a decision. Number 3. Negotiate the job offer this way. I would recommend for you to give HR a call to negotiate on the offer. Do not write an email as it will make it easier for them to say no to you. Let's say a company offers you a salary of $4,000. Here is how you can make your pitch. Hi, Michelle. Appreciate you taking the time to go through the offer with me the other day. I would like to check with you if there is any way we can negotiate on the offer. I do believe that my skills and experiences will definitely be of value to the company. I have given it some thought and if you are able to offer me at $4,200, I will be able to accept this offer right away. There is a high chance that Michelle will tell you that she'll need to check with her management on this and she will update you again. If the company refuses to budge, you can either 1. Risk it all and just reject the offer, hoping that they will counter offer you or 2. Just accept it. Risk it all only if you are in a highly specialized and demanded field. For example, a cybersecurity analyst is one of them. If the company is desperate enough to bring you in, knowing that finding another person with the same skills is going to be a long and strenuous process, they may be willing to give you a better deal. Number 4. Do not give your last drawn salary. There is a lot of controversy surrounding this topic. There is currently no rules stating that job seekers must declare their last drawn salaries and employers cannot insist they do so. Many employers do make use of last drawn salaries to benchmark job offers. Therefore, sharing of your last drawn salary may be a disadvantage to you if you happen to come from a company that does not pay well. A friend of mine recently informed HR that he did not want to share his last round salary because he did not want to be benchmarked based on how much he is currently earning but would like to be compensated based on the market rate for his skills in the industry. This friend received a 50% increment on his new offer. Number 5. Understanding the job requirements to upsell your skills Always ensure that you understand what the employer is looking for before attending the interview. If the requirement says that they need someone proficient in C programming, be sure to emphasize to them how well you can code. The moment you lack proficiency in certain critical areas of the job, 
The employer will not be able to justify giving you an offer that is above the mean in the company. Number 6. Portray yourself as someone who is highly wanted. Have you ever been asked this question during the interview? Hi Tim. So, could you tell me if you have applied for jobs at any other companies? The best way to reply this is by telling the hiring manager that you have indeed applied for two more companies and they are in the midst of either preparing you an offer or you have been scheduled for a second interview. If you have read The Laws of Human Nature by Robert Greene, he talks about the law of covetousness. We need to become an elusive object of desire. The more distant and unattainable something or someone is, the more we want it or them. You must be desired by others to be desired by any. When selling a house, having multiple parties show up at the same time is extremely good for the seller and not so good for the buyers. Ignoring the simple supply or demand ratios, we humans enter into a state of competition. If they want it, I can't let them have it. It actually takes quite a bit of discipline to not fall victim to bidding wars. So the same goes for hiring managers as well. When they see that other people are interested in you, they will put pressure on their HR to ensure that they give you an attractive offer to bring you in. I hope that these tips will come in handy when you're on your next job hunt. If you enjoyed the content in this video, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below on what kind of interview tips you'd like to hear from us next. Till next time.